I'm going to leave this mostly for questions for you all because I know you want to know about Saturday. Um, here's what I'll say to open up is um, we're right in the middle of it. So we just finished practice nine. And, um, you know, I think it's day 11 or day 12. And so, like, I'm pissed. Like, the kids are pissed. The whole coaches are pissed just because you, you're doing the same thing over and over again, right? And that's kind of the dog days of camp. And this is the most important week you have in your in your development of your football team and we scrimmaged on Saturday we got 50 plus reps with the ones and the twos yesterday was off we had a hard practice today in shells we're going to have a hard practice tomorrow where we're going to tackle some on Tuesday we're going to start school on Wednesday which they're excited about and then we're going to have a hard practice on Thursday a little bit lighter on Friday and then we're going to go 50 to 60 plays on Saturday and so this is the toughest week as far as physicality, mental toughness, all those type of things. This will be the toughest week that we have. And so it's really about kind of finding where we're at. And we tested them some today, and we had some good responses, and we got some things we got to get better at. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be a tough week. But it's also going to kind of tell us where we're at. And so I'm excited to I'm excited to see that. So we'll open up with questions. So um, with Saturday scrimmage, obviously big evaluation for you. Give us your thoughts, what you saw, good, bad, and different, whatever. Yeah, I'll start defensively. I thought just overall, we did a good job of getting lined up, and and that's been, you know, my biggest things have been alignment, all right, physicality, and and getting uh, getting to the ball. You know, really a, a straining deal getting to the ball. Um, and I thought our alignments were good, a couple off with the twos, but our alignments were pretty solid overall. Um, I would say we're almost there as far as getting to the ball, um, but we're, we're not quite where we need to be. Um, and then the physicality piece, we're being physical. We just got to – when we go into tackle situations, we've got to do a good job of running our feet. And and it's like I was telling our team at the end, it's like, listen, guys, like the reason I'm like intense today, the reason I'm going to be intense this week is like we're not easing into this. You know, like we're not we're not easing into this thing. Like – I was sitting there yesterday, and I had some downtime probably, which isn't good, so I'm watching a little Penn State, and, like, I'm watching them on offense, and, like, we're not easing into this, you know? So, like, if you don't run your feet on contact versus those three backs they got, it's going to be a long day. So we got to run our feet on contact. And so that's the thing from a physicality standpoint we got to do a better job of is running our feet. You know, I um, I think our D-line is doing better. You know, we're uh, – we're a group that's going to be by committee. All right? So we're deeper than we have been. Maybe we don't have a, um, a guy like Dante that's sticking out right now. Um, but we're deeper than we have been. But it's going to be by committee. And so we're going to play 9 to 11 guys up there, and we're going to roll them. And so – and, and but they when they're in there for their three to five plays, they got to be you know they got to be playing with pad level. They got to be striking with their hands, and they're, that group's getting better. Like I, I'm 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 pleased with their development. Linebacker, a work in progress. You know that's a that's a position we're putting a lot of pressure on. The way I look at it is every practice that 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 I'm making, I'm like, okay, how can I stress our defense at linebacker to get them ready where they have to communicate them and and Aubrey. And then on offense, like, how can I put the most stress possible on the quarterbacks? And so – and then Aubrey Burks had a great camp. Um, and I thought in the in the scrimmage on Saturday, our corners – I thought Lamp and, and Beanie both did – both made some plays. Um, and then uh, Anthony Wilson is showing up. And so – He's been a positive addition. Um, offensively, the quarterbacks, uh, we did some situational work. Uh, Nico had some uh, had a really good two minute drive at the end of the at the end of the scrimmage. Uh, struggled with some decision making early. I thought uh, Garrett was pretty solid. You know, um, and he ran around, made a couple scramble plays, but really just solid in his decision making on uh, on Saturday. Our running backs, Jalen Anderson, had a really good day. Was productive. Um, he's a guy we need. We just got to get him in shape. You know, he's got to be able to play continuous plays, but he's got he, – he's he's talented. Jaheim White was good. He was better without the ball. And that's what you always worry about with running backs early in their career is can they play away from the ball when the ball's not in their hands? Can they lead block? Can they pass pro? Um, can they run routes? And, and I thought he did a better job. And Justin Johnson was really consistent. Uh, we took it easy on CJ. Uh, Justin's been probably our most consistent player at that position during fall camp. Um, tight end um, – we focused uh, kind of more on the run game. We didn't throw it a ton in the scrimmage just because we wanted to kind of set the tone uh, for our defense. Um, 
And so, you know, they did okay, but we didn't put any stress on them in the past game. Traylon Ray, true freshman receiver, was our leading receiver in the scrimmage. Um, and, and he's, from a freshman standpoint, he's, uh, he's doing some good things. And I think he'll be in the mix for us. And then Preston and Hudson Clement both had nice days. So um, they give you some give you some insight. Your two offensive line. You got any confidence in that group, or where is that? Group? Yeah, Johnny William, Johnny Williams is going to be a player, um, and so he's a re he's going to be a true freshman. We'd love to redshirt him, um, but but that's a hit. He can play, and so we're excited about him. Um, Nick Malone continues to progress. He's going to be in the mix. We'll rotate him in and out. Um, you know, Hubbard and Yates, we've talked about whoever whoever's in the second group. Those guys got a lot of football experience. They'll be able to play. You know, the people that got to get better, you know, I, and I'll say this, Bryce Biggs is coming on. Bryce Biggs had a really nice fall camp so far. Um, and then continuing on, just talking about, you know, those two groups, like Sully Weedman, we need him, we need him to make a step. You know, didn't have a great day today. He's a guy that we're trying to apply some pressure to. Um, that him, he and Mo Hamilton, those guys, they, it's time. It's time. They're red shirt freshmen, and it's time for those guys to make a step. Landon Livingston's playing center and doing a nice job. Really grown, uh, proud of his progress. He's not ready yet, but he's getting better. So we went um, kind of we went our ones and twos and tried to put a next best unit out there. So if you think about it on your punt return team and your kickoff return teams, a lot of offensive pieces, your kickoff team and your punt teams, a lot of defensive pieces. And so, um, you know, when our kickoff team, we put our next best kickoff return. So trying to get some good on good work. Um, kickoff team um, wasn't as good. First time on Saturday, we really did 11 on 11 full like cover with full blocking. Um, we got to dent it better. I thought our kickers had a nice day as far as getting it in the end zone and placing it. We got to do a better job of arriving with ill intentions at the ball on kickoff. On kickoff return, Beanie Bishop had a had a really nice return at, and Jaheim White. And so we're making progress there. Punt, we continue. You know, I'll tell you, uh, Le Leighton Bechtel, who's our backup punter, he's had a really nice camp. And uh, punt return, um, Preston and then – uh, Beanie, Beanie had a night one uh, really nice return, and then we're growing in that. You know, we got to continue. We made a big step last year on that unit. We got to continue to grow there. Michael Hayes made a made a really long kick in the scrimmage too. You know, back to a quick one on the offensive line. Your your right guard position. You think you just rotate that no matter who starts, or is that still to be determined? No, nah, I think it's still to be determined. Mm -hmm. You know, it just depends how big a gap there is there. Mm -hmm. I think both of them will play, but I don't. I don't know if it'll. I don't know if it'll be a fifty-fifty deal. Yeah, yeah, Trey Lathan. Trey Lathan had a great day today and uh, made a big step on uh, on Saturday too. Um, and he's athletic. That's what we're looking for. You know, he's a. Uh, so you got to remember, he played receiver in high school, uh, played a little bit of defense his senior year, um, but from a size, speed, length, um, he's those things. You know, he just get, he needs he needs repetitions. And uh, I thought he had a really nice day on Saturday, and I thought he may have had the best day of anybody out there today. Um, he had a pick six and a team drill. Um, had a really nice uh, stop on a run play in a fourth down period. We did, and so. Uh, pleased with his progress, and, and he can do it. He can do it. We just got to get him. We got to get him ready to go fast. You know, last week you mentioned uh, something about you would like to see maybe college football go to a combined practice thing sometime in the fall. Um, just curious, what, what would your ideal scenario for a combined practice be for WV or a college football team? Yeah, what I think it is, you pick a weekend. I think it's it, it should be your first weekend uh, or sometime during your second week. And you just do back-to-back -back practices, you know, and you do seven on seven, you do pass pro, pass rush, you do an inside drill, um, you do some controlled team setting stuff where not necessarily scrimmage, but you do very similar to what the NFL teams do. You know, they, they usually do it and then do a, a preseason game. They're ne there's never going to be a point where they're going to let us play a preseason game, even though the NFL makes a lot of money for it, right? Like there's some, it makes some sense to do that. All right, if we're going to be about money. Um, 
But at the same time, uh, I, I would like, and I think it's good. You know, I think it, I think it is. Um, and I don't think it has to necessarily be another power five school. I think you can bring in some, you know, within your region, bring people in. Um, it needs to be somebody from a coaching staff you have trust in because you don't want them sharing. Um, and, and you want to make sure that they practice in the right way. And, but, but I'd like to see it. I think it would break it up. And I think you'd be able to, to have a little bit better idea of what you have going in an opening game. Especially more just to get them an idea of what maybe competition is going to look like when they yeah, step out. Yeah, I, I, well, I think it benefits everybody, but it would, you know, especially if you're going to play a young kid that's going to play. Um, yeah, you know, because you're, you don't know exactly what you're going to see. You know, you kind of get in a routine where you know what you're getting out of the offense and defense because you see them every day. Especially we practice 25 times versus each other. That's a lot, and and so to break the monotony of it is, is I think it would be really beneficial, and I think it'd be good for the game. You know. Um, but we got a lot of other fires put out before we get to that one. Just out of curiosity, is this, since you brought up a lot of your opinions on this, is this something that you think has some legs? Like if you're no, around the country, not yet. No, I bring it up. I bring it up in some of our AFCA meetings. But it, it, in, in all honesty, like. Which pushback? So in, here's, it's, it's all about level of issues, right? And so right now is the, the, the hot topics that we're trying to figure out are transfer portal, NIL, right? And then everything else is kind of on the back burner. Does that make sense? I'm sure. And so if you think about it, all the competition points, all the competition items, really everything's falling on the back burner other than the running clock on first down, which is, again, for TV so you can stay within your time slot. And so the, the competitive – and everything's for recruiting because they're trying to manage um, the recruiting piece a little bit, which is more important. Like, if you ask me to, what's more important, the recruiting calendar, getting that fixed or having an inter-squad practice, or I mean uh, having a, another team practice, I'm going to say recruiting calendar, right? And so I think it's just about levels of importance. You know, I do think, I, do, I really do think if you think and go five, ten years in advance, I think you're going to see that. But it's going to be after we get some of these other issues kind of ironed out. And it could be in spring ball. I'm sorry, John. Wide receiver, how many do you feel good about right now? Yeah, I, th I think if you ask me next Monday, I'll have a better answer for you. Or, or uh, whenever, whenever, uh, if Saturday night, if y'all are going to stick around. Monty takes care of y'all because we're going. We were supposed to go Saturday night. He didn't want. I was going to talk on Saturday night. He didn't want to do that. Um, the, uh, but whether it's Saturday night or Monday, uh, I have a better answer for you. Yeah, we're trying to put – we're trying to get some guys ready. So, it would be premature for me to tell you, like, who I think's ready because there's a group that is ready and there's a group that I'm trying to get ready. Neil injuries, I mean, the progress of a Sean Martin, Davis Malinger, Asani yeah. Redwood, and then anybody else. So, Asani is making positive gains. He is ahead of schedule. Um, game one, I'm not sure. I don't want to say no yet. Mm -hmm. um, but he's such a young player. He's a redshirt freshman. We're not going to play him until he's ready. Um, Sean Martin, uh, he, he, he should practice some this week and, and I'm not, I'm not really concerned about him going into game one. Um, who was the other person you asked about? They, he just got to get stronger. He's got to get stronger. That's the, that's the thing right now. He, uh, it's his strength and his, in in the, in the leg he got, he got repaired. So he's got to continue to the, the knee is good. He just got to get his leg stronger. Nah, we got some nicks and bruises like anything else, but nothing, nothing of significance, no. Seems like a lot from the game last year with CJ, with Hubbard, a few guys even brought up himself about conditioning and mm -hmm. things that need to get in better shape, things like that. From an overall perspective, how do you feel about the shape of the team in terms of conditioning and, and that factor in comparison to last year? We got to get our run, well, our running backs and our nose guards got to get our nose tackles got to get so. That interior piece, Hammond, Lockhart, Satorma, those guys got to get got to get ready to go from a conditioning standpoint. Um, and same with the running back. And you just got to play yourself into it. Like Mike can run them all the time, and we can do as many, you know, like. But when you put the helmet and you put the shoulder pads on, and you got to carry the ball, and then you got to sprint back, or you got to run a route full speed, and you got to sprint back, it's different. So we got to play themselves into it. And that's why this is a big week. We got those that that position, those two positions, got to play themselves into shape. Oh yeah, yeah, it separates. It's, you, you, it's yeah, like the make or break yeah. This is where this is where the separation happens. You know, 
it gets a little hard, gets a little hairy. You kind of see what, what people are about. Yeah. It's the the timing of trying to peak, get your performance peak. That's that's hard. There, there's science. There's lot. There's people that are smarter than me that are helping me with that. Um, you know, as far as the mental component and those things, I think we've got a good handle on that. Um, you know, I watched Penn State a little bit yesterday. That's just because um, my. Uh, I was home with my 15 year old. She didn't want to talk with me. My kids were gone, or my other two were gone. So they've been out of town. And so, uh, um, so I had some time, but we're not, this is all about us. We're really not talking to, to, our, to our players about Penn State. We're not doing any Penn State prep. We're trying to get our guys ready for the season this week. Um, but as far as where you can run your fastest and be your freshest on that, that's. That's why this week's so important because you got to start kind of. There's a different cycle you go into starting next Monday and Tuesday. You mentioned being pissed off. How do you channel that? To make it positive. To yeah, I, well, I think it's just this, man. It's like the 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 challenge is for for a coach is when you know the players because they can see it. So like they go on a normal routine, like they've been up here all day, whatever the rules allow you to have, right? They have an off day once a week. We have to have, we only have 25 practices, so you spread them out. But they know, like today, they're here, they have a break in the afternoon, they're coming back in the evening. And tomorrow's going to be the same. Well, Wednesday school starts, right? And then Thursday they're going to get on a, a their school routine. And so they know they're here all day. Tomorrow they know they're here all day. So, But they can see the light. All the students are coming back. You know, we got Fall Fest on Tuesday night. And and I'm sure, like, I'm not that damn old. So, like, I can remember the first week of school. You know, it's a pretty good time, right? And uh, and so the job as a, as a coach is when you know that they're starting to drift or they're starting to get – like, you better be at your best. And so – and it's about continuously challenging them to make sure that we're not just getting through this, but we're getting better because of it. And, and, and I just know, like, it's a, this is a critical week. It's a critical week, and, and we need to be hard on them. We need to be tough on them. And then and we got to get some calluses this week so we can be ready to go. No, I think that's – it's just – it's you go through, you, pr you tackle a little bit in the spring – we tackle more in the spring than we have, but you tackle some in the spring, then you have a long break where you can't tackle. And so it's about repetitions. You got to work it. You got to work tackling just like you got to work anything else. And I think I said this the other day when I talked to you all, is like every coach in the country is trying to figure out what's too much tackling and what's enough tackling, you know, and it's a balancing act to get to that point. And, you know, last year I think we erred on, this, on the, the safety side as far as – not the – not like safety people get injured, but like being safe and like being a less, a little less contact. This year we're going to say, hey, we're going to do a little bit more. Now we're going to protect some people. We got to do a little bit more because we weren't ready. All right, and so we got to get ready. And when you're tackling, you got to run your feet. And it's like, all right, you see it on video, then you correct it. All right, or you miss a tackle and then you correct it. And so I think that's where we're at right now. We we tackled twice last week, and. We got better from day one to day two. We're going to tackle again tomorrow, and hopefully there's some improvement, and we'll continue to make progress as we as we process through. Yep, up. Mike. Uh, you mentioned intervals before, mm -hmm. and the way these stage of practice, and just the focus here on this week too. But um, does it kind of set up where you can everything you're talking about phasing and peaking? If you do this right, then next week the interval kind of takes care of itself, and you're in a good spot. I know it's a lot of fingers crossed stuff, but do players get that and understanding like, you know, gas pedal accelerator, the difference? So right they understand that the, this week is hard and like the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday is going to be our biggest workloads of the entire fall camp. Um, and they understand week three. Now they don't understand like the time we practice and all that kind of stuff, what goes into it. But they do understand that this is this is the peak and then it comes back. And we'll push it up at the start of game week, and hopefully on Saturday with the you know whenever we play that first Saturday in September, then we're able to run. And there's a lot that goes into it. There's from a nutrition standpoint and hydration and and making sure if a guy 
if he runs 21, that we got him running 21 at the right times. And so, um, and again, there's people smarter than me that are helping. Your roster or player participation can expand starting Wednesday. I guess how many additional? So that's I'll let I'll let Monty know. I think we got four or five, but I don't want to. Nah, we got we got most everybody here. We got a few coming in. You had that walk on tryout Saturday. We're gonna yeah, yeah we are we are and uh, we're gonna promote it a little bit. We need a left footed punter and I need a snapper. So like y'all can promote that left footed punter and a snapper. <laughs> that's specific. Left handed shortstop. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Looking for a left footed punter. Anybody that's enrolled in school can punt left footed. All right, thanks guys. <laughs>